you need to get the position of the speakers right in your room and your position relative to the speakers both are critically vital if you want to achieve good sound. Ideally you want to form an equilateral triangle with your speakers which means that you're a similar distance from your speakers as they are from each other. You can sit a little bit further back but not too much. Most people sit way too far away from their speakers and what that means is that they're getting a lot more reflected sound from the room rather than direct sound from the speaker itself and that's going to have a significant impact on degrading sound quality. Get your speakers away from the walls unless they're specifically designed to work close to walls. The minimum distance that I would keep is 90 centimeters or three feet and that's measuring from the front of the speaker not the back because that's normally where the drivers are located which are producing the sound waves. The reason you keep that distance is that it delays the sound waves by a minimum of five milliseconds. Anything less than that and your brain perceives the reflected sound as a time smearing of the original impulse, the original sound coming from the speaker. And that time smearing effect will affect the clarity, the sound staging and the imaging. Another thing that people often forget to do is to adjust their listening position. Low frequencies in your room are all about pressure. There'll be areas of high pressure and low pressure caused by standing waves and the long wavelengths associated with low frequencies. You want to make sure that you're not sitting in a resonant peak where the bass is booming. Similarly, you don't want to be sitting in a null where there's a bass suck out as well. There will be areas in your room where the pressure will be more even. That's where you want to place your listening location. There are a lot more factors that make a difference as well. The distance between the speakers, their height, whether they're pointing out directly into the room or towed in a little bit more towards you. Even the rake angle, whether they're pointed forwards or backwards slightly. I go into this in a lot more detail in my video on speaker setup, which I'll link in the description below. You wanna try and achieve acoustic symmetry in your room. Not all of us have perfectly rectangular rooms where the speakers are equidistant from the side walls. For example, you might have an open space on this side and a wall relatively close up on the other side. What you have to understand is that that open space acts like an absorber. So if that's the case, you wanna place an absorber on the other side to try and achieve some degree of symmetry. If you're getting into room treatment, you have to have a little bit of understanding of what you're trying to achieve. The RT60 time of the room is the time it takes for the original impulse signal to drop by 60 dB, by which time 90% of that signal is gone. Most studios will want to be acoustically dead with an RT60 time of 0.2 to 0.3 seconds. Remember, they're listening to scrutinize minute details in the mix as opposed to listening for pleasure. In most home environments, a desirable RT60 time is between 0.5 and 0.7 seconds, even up to 0.8 seconds, depending on how rich you want the sound to be against how much detail you wanna hear in the recording itself. Most home environments, due to having quite a bit of furniture in them, are gonna have an RT60 time quite respectably within those parameters. It's only when you get into large spaces with minimal furniture that you'll notice that the RT60 time will go up above one second and the intelligibility of speech will suffer. If you're going down the acoustic treatment path, there's generally two areas where people tend to start. The first reflection point on the side wall is where if you placed a mirror, you'd actually see a reflection of the speaker. Treating this reflection point is quite popular with a bunch of audiophiles because it's the strongest early reflection that we perceive and it's those early reflections that we use or our brain uses to define the space we're in. So by treating it, you can actually increase the sound stage width in your room beyond the limit of your speakers. The trade-off is that you get less of an immersive wraparound sound. So you have to identify if that's a priority for you. If you're treating it, you want to treat it uniformly all the way down to the transitional frequency of the room, which is normally around 250 to 300 Hertz. And that's because that's the point where our physics model, which is in terms of reflections for what's describing in the room, no longer becomes useful. Below the transitional frequency, we're using a different model. In order to do that, the panels need to be thick, about eight inches from the wall if you're talking about a porous type of absorber. You can get away with a six inch panel with a two inch air gap because the physics allows that to work almost equally as effectively. 
Acoustic foam is not as dense, so they're gonna to have to be a lot thicker. I advise probably not to use them. You could use diffusion, and depending on the type of diffuser that you're using, it'll need to be probably a minimum of around 12 inches or 30 centimeters deep. Below the transitional frequency of the room, it's no longer useful to think of things in terms of reflections. It's more useful to think of things in terms of areas of high pressure and low pressure. Almost all rooms will have problems in this area. So what can you do about it? You can install bass traps and they will help to bring the RT60 time of the room down in this area. But in order to work, they'll need to be thick and you'll need a lot of them. It won't help with the RT60 time, but if you want a more even low frequency response across your room, you can do active bass management. Adding subwoofers properly set up increases the number of bass sources in your room and helps to even out the response. If you get nothing else from this video and you only get this, do you know what? I'll be reasonably satisfied. By far the most important thing to get right in terms of good low frequency performance, good high frequency performance, and good sound in general is the position of your speakers in the room and your position relative to them. That's called positional EQ. In my opinion, that's about 70% of the way there to get great sound in itself. I talk about it in more detail in my video on speaker setup, which if you haven't seen or haven't seen for a while and want to refresh your memory, I'll link in the description below. I hope you got some utility out of this video. And if you like what I'm doing with this channel and want to see it grow and you haven't done already, please do all that social media stuff. Check me out on Patreon for consultancy services, as well as the bonus content that I offer. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.